Why would you want to run Power Query code from outside of Power BI Desktop? By trying to answer this question, I actually think I figured out how to do Power Query version control, which is centralized and can refresh automatically in the Power BI service. And it happened a little bit by accident. See, it all started when I was reading the Power BI subreddit and I came across this comment. Fun fact, in Power Query, Evaluate is ultra strong. So much so that you can have your M code in a text file on SharePoint and use Evaluate in Power Query to read and run that code. And I absolutely had to try it out. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hop over to Rick the Groot's Gorilla BI blog, go to create date table or calendar in Power Query M, and I'm going to scroll down and just grab this simple piece of code. This is what I'm going to use to test things with, and it's simply creating a list of days starting from 2021, October 15th, and iterating five times over one each. So it's just creating five different days. I'm going to copy this code. Then I'm going to go to a fresh Power BI desktop, click on transform data to open up the Power Query editor. And over the query panel, I'm going to right click and scroll and hover down to new query and create blank query. Here, I'm just going to paste control V right here into the code. And you can see that it's already created everything that I need. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the query, go to advanced editor. I'm going to copy all of this code and open a text editor like Notepad++ and I'm going to paste it in and I'm going to save it. Uh, right now I've saved it as, uh, I'm going to save it as simple data list and it can be a normal text file or you can save it as .q. Either one will work just fine. So after I save it, I'm going to basically use the code to call it in the Power Query itself. So you can see that this is what you've expected and now I'm going to just create a new query that's going to be blank and I'm going to modify this so that it works. So the actual code we're going to use is actually from the subreddit. So the person actually left code here and I'm going to copy this and paste it into my Power Query. What you actually have to do is you have to right click on this query this time, go to the advanced editor and simply replace everything in there. Now there is something extra you have to do, which is you've got to go to the actual place that you've saved the code. Here I have it. I'm going to right click on this and click on copy as path. Once I do that, I can replace the contents area here, control C, control V. And once I do that, it actually works. So amazing. It's gone a piece of code from a text file and is able to run it with no true issues. Then I did what any other person would do, which is post about it on LinkedIn. The post started some interesting conversations, especially with Brian about what if you could actually use this to call code that's actually stored online. For example, on Azure DevOps or GitHub. So I did what any normal person would do, which is also create a GitHub. And so I created a repo. I uploaded the simple date list.txt, this mQuery code that I had saved. And I was actually deciding to Google a little bit more to see if someone had actually done this before. And of course someone had. I found another uh, Power BI subreddit post that said, you can call custom functions from a GitHub or local file. And you can actually do this with this exact code that this person shared. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it into my Power BI query code. And once I do that, I'm going to replace this, uh, you know, it's like URL here with my code. So I'm going to go to my repo. I'm going to go open it up and click on the raw file. Because once I do, I'll actually have the code as a raw text form, which I can simply add into my Power Query. So got to understand that if you don't use the raw form, it will not actually work. So I'm just going to press OK. And you can see that it actually works. Right now it's showing 15 instead of 5 because uh, the raw version that I've uploaded actually has 15. Don't worry about that. It's the same code and it works terrifically well. So I renamed all the queries to be something different. Code in Power Query, code in the file, code in GitHub. I simply closed and applied and I did try to publish this and you're going to see what happened. Simply put out a couple of, you know, um, tables with the data in there. And once I actually publish it, so I did publish it and here's the problem. So when you go to the Power Query, this file is called Power Query Test and I'm going to just refresh it and you're going to see that it doesn't work. The error that you get is that this data set includes a dynamic data source. And this is actually something that they address in the second uh, Reddit post that I actually was looking at. This code does not actually function with scheduled refresh. It's simply that expression evaluate doesn't work in the service. 
Now this isn't 100% true, and I'm going to show you how I managed to resolve this. If you want to really understand how this code works, I really recommend checking out the PowerQuery.how article, expression.evaluate, which is all from Rick the Groot. It really goes into detail about what evaluate is, what the hashtag shared keyword is, which is basically defining the environment. So all of the different functions are being defined in this hashtag shared, which we'll go over in just a second. And it even goes over how the web.contents is actually being used in the code in order to actually bring the text to life. If I create a new query and I simply put in hashtag shared, then you'll actually see that hashtag shared is going to call all of the functions that exist inside Power Query. So that means that all of the queries that I've named, as well as all of the queries that ex exist inside Power BI desktop. And this is the core of the problem. I said desktop, not all of these functions can work inside Power BI service, which will take us to the next version of this code. Even Rick's article, you know, it's like didn't have a solution for me. So I actually thought this was going to be it. But that's when I found this article from Inka Feldman. I really hope that's right. Um, and she basically has a piece of code where you can enter a URL and it will actually give you the text in order for to make that code be able to run. So if I copy this entire code and post it into my Power Query, you'll actually be able to see that's okay. So I'm going to create a new blank query, advanced editor, replace everything in here, click done. And now this is going to let me put in a URL and actually it's going to paste everything that I need out. So code in GitHub, let me go and get that URL from here. And I'm going to paste that into the HTML address here, invoke this. So actually you, you also have to copy the entire code and you're going to have to paste it into the query, into the query text, and then put the URL as the HTML address. So if you do this two things and you invoke it, then it will generate something to replace hashtag shared. It's actually going to list the function that is being used. And you can basically take this, copy it and paste it into, you know, it's like your code and it will run. And it will run also notably in the service. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove everything or I'm going to just create a new Power BI report. You know, it's like just put this piece of code in and I'm going to upload it into the service to show you that it works. So now that I have a new Power BI report, I'm just going to basically copy the function, control C and then control V. And pay, I've pasted the function in and it's the exact same function where I you invoke the web contents of my URL. And instead of using the hashtag shared keyword, which is going to reference a lot of these functions that don't work in the service, it's only referencing lists.dates, which is all that's actually being used here. So I'm going to do this, close this up and publish this. So I am saving this as our query test with only MKS. And now it's just blank because I didn't put any you know, it's like visuals in there, but all we need to do is look to see if we can refresh it, we can't initially because scheduled refresh has been disabled. And what you need to do is understand that you just need to go into settings and make sure that it can refresh without credentials. So I just click on skip test connection with an anonymous uh, authentication me method. And now it should be able to refresh. The way I got there was I just hit these three little buttons and clicked on settings. And that should take you to all of the information that you need. Data source credentials, that was the problem. And now if we go here, we should be able to hit refresh now and it does actually run. That's fantastic. That's what we want. But unfortunately, this isn't good enough for us to actually use for version control because what it's actually doing is it's stated that list.dates is being used as a function. What if you want to use the new function in your code? Like instead of using list.dates, what if I wanted to use, uh, you know, it's like any other function? It simply wouldn't work. And in order to, you know, circumvent this, we still need to figure out a way to kind of have the accessibility of using hashtag shared to reference each, every query possible without using hashtag share. And the way that I did it is with brute force. So I had this ha a hashtag shared query, which simply, you know, it's like brought every single query that exists in Power BI desktop. So I loaded this into, you know, it's like my lovely Power BI desktop. And what I did was I simply went into this query one and I copied the entire table. So simply clicked on copy table 
and I brought it into Excel. I used a little bit of, you know, it's like um, Excel in order to split the family from the actual, uh, you know, function. And I simply started to try to find which of these items would work in Power BI, you know, it's like service. And it simply was the items that I thought would be most likely used. This took a lot of trial and error, and I eventually managed to get it down to these items. So binary, combiner, compare, etc. 25 different kinds of, you know, queries that I filtered out and have all of them written out 534 different items, which I simply put into a function that is actually going to maybe be a little bit shocking to you based around Imka's uh, for, uh, you know, it's like existing function. I basically took the hashtag shared and I replaced it by physically declaring every single function that could potentially be used in the service. And it would still try to generate a piece of code that would maybe work. But uh, just, just for you guys to see uh, what it actually does is if I take the URL and I paste it into this HTML address and I invoke it, then it will still generate this, you know, it's like code, which I can copy paste right into the function and it will work and it will work no matter what the change happens in the actual, you know, it's like source file. Pretty, pretty great. Unfortunately, it is of course called invoke function, but that's something that we'll try to fix in just a sec. And these functions once published into Power Query actually still work. So you can see that was test query from file version two. So right here we have the version two. And if I click on refresh, it will actually refresh with no problems. Really, really nice. But there was still one thing left to fix, which is the fact that you had to copy and paste the code. And the main way that I tried to do it was by using parameters. Now, the first thing to do is to realize that when you actually add a new parameter, you can put it as type, you know, it's like any, but that will not work in the Power BI service. Any is not supported. So make sure that if you're using parameters, it's at least a text. Uh, I did put, you know, it's like any value so that you could just type in anything that you wanted. And I simply hit OK. I've already created something here. And based around the function that was generated from, you know, it's like the function that I made off of Imke's original function. Yes, that's a it's complete mouthful. In this function, I decided to see if we could use web.contents and use the relative path and the query arguments in order to actually just generate whatever you wanted. The reason for doing that is actually following Chris Webb's, uh, you know, it's like blog where he actually goes into a little bit of detail about using these two parameters. <clears throat> but the main thing to realize is that if you're not actually using the relative path and you try to just put in the whole URL into a parameter, you run into the dynamic data error again, and it simply won't work. It's not a hashtag shared keyword, you know, issue, but it's simply the fact that you have not specified where the source is and Microsoft has issues with that. How are you going to define, you know, the security of, you know, it's like where you're connecting to if the connection can change at any point. A workaround, however, <coughs> is this relative path item. So you can basically set the web.contents first arguments to be the actual website portal. So this, in, in this case, it's raw.githubusercontent.com. And then the relative path can now be pointing to anything that you want. I've already uploaded this into Power BI. And what I've been able to do is if I go into the settings and I go into the parameters, I can change this parameter into anything that I want and it will pull that data as long as it's from a raw file in GitHub. The way that I was testing that was actually very, very simple. So I had the actual report here with two different, uh, you know, it's like rows. And this was basically calling in data from one of my files. So it's actually calling it from this one. And you can see it only has two steps. But then in my, you know, repo, I had a different file that would create 15 steps. So instead of doing anything else, I simply copied the end text here, control C, and I pasted that into this parameter here. And I hit apply. And once I hit apply, it's not actually going to do anything because it only changes the parameter. So you have to actually go here and refresh the data set. And once I do, you'll see that, you know, it's like it refreshes no problem. And once that's done, I can refresh the actual page. And you'll see that instead of two, it now has 15 different, uh, you know, it's like items. So that's pretty cool. 
but it still needs a little bit of development simply because if the actual URL includes some, you know, it's like query items, like it's an API where you have to post some information to make it work, then you need to, you know, actually account for that in your code itself, which isn't done in my code right now. So that's not particularly useful, especially if you have authentication in your URL. Now, to make this as useful as possible, um, I had to do something else. But first, I was going to form internet points. I made a post showcasing, you know, it's like how, exactly what I just showed you now on LinkedIn. And it was actually a really good decision because a couple of people reached out to me, especially, you know, it's like John Kursky, who had a really, really interesting article that he wrote about this actual use case. A lot of the things that, you know, it's like um, he had problems with, we actually did talk about. But one of the things that really, really opened my eyes was the possibility of creating a library that you could import. This is actually something from Kim Berg Burgess. And basically what this person has done is he's created a piece of code where if you basically copy that code and paste it into Power BI, you can basically just create, okay, so create a blank query, replace the entire query with just this and then okay, and, and you do actually need to re rename it m but once you do that you can actually use any of these as a function so you can right click and add a new query and that will just be a query that is referential to this item so that means that essentially if i wanted to or if anyone you know say wanted to create a function that is invoked here i can copy all of this text replace a piece of code or create a new piece of code here. For example, let's take uh, this, let's take this item here, right? You can see that it's called add columns equals compose something. And that's this function here. What if I called it date list is equal to what I just pasted. Okay. <clears throat> now you can see that here date list, although it's not a function, it's a list that's based around, you know, it's like this, it's still connected to the online URL it's still connected to this GitHub user content. It's still connected to this parameter. So that means that I could basically just add as a new query. And this list, even though it doesn't have that much here, is referential to the code inside the library. Really, really fantastic way that you could actually get a full list of items that you want, uh, you know, it's like to have. And with a one piece of code, you can bring all of that into any Power BI report that you want in the future. It can even be simplified further because if you actually consider that I've called this M because that's what Kim Burgess, uh, you know, it's like was actually using. But if you create, if you actually declare shared as this value, you can reference it inside the code that you put into the library. So you only need to post this once and then the date list itself can have M shared to refer to this table. So basically, this is now your code for, you know, it's like using a parameter to refer to a specific, you know, it's like URL and it works in, you know, it's like Power Query. So let me just show you that it also works inside the, um, in, inside the Power BI service. So now it's published. And if we go into the service, you can see that the date list here, which is inside a library is, you know, it's like, it is, is simply there. We're going to go to Power Query version four. We're going to refresh it and you can see that it refreshes just fine. Now, I'm not going to actually show this to you right now, and you're just going to have to take my word for it. When I click uh, settings and I have the refresh, I did have it daily, but it uh, right now I'm on the, you know, it's like free version. I can't set it to refresh within, you know, exactly one minute. And I'm not going to wait 25 minutes to, you know, it's like show this to you. Take my word for it. Scheduled refresh does work just fine. So where does the version control actually come in? Well, it comes inside, you know, it's like either GitHub or you know, Azure DevOps or whatever you're actually using. Whenever you're uploading or making changes, you can always go into your file, go into the history and see, you know, it's like who did which commits at what time. That is all about versioning. You know, it's like you can start using branches and whatnot. That's not something that I'm going to go into or explain very much because I really only use DevOps, uh, you know, it's like in order to do that. But this should open up a whole lot of possibilities for, you know, it's like everyone out there. So if you're still here, thanks for watching. All of the code that you see here in this video will be in my GitHub. And as always, thanks and take care.